If you have followed my videos here on YouTube, you already know that the DNA molecule has two functions. It carries genetic information, i.e. recipes for proteins, and carries this information to the next generation. This is summarized in this drawing, which you hopefully already have seen and copied to your notes. It says that DNA is transcribed into mRNA, which is then translated into proteins, which coordinate or carry out almost all of a cell's function. For example, replication of the DNA molecule. And of course, this video is all about DNA replication. Before we dive into that though, I would like you to introduce you to the cell cycle. In an organism or a part of an organism that's growing, the cells are constantly dividing. This is according to the stages in the cell cycle. We start by drawing a cross like this. Now, the first part of the cell cycle is called G1 for GAP1. This stage in the cell's life is characterized by rapid growth, i.e. the cell increases in size. It's also during this stage that the cell has its normal metabolic activity. This means that the cell essentially does what it's supposed to do. Sometimes this is written as an extra loop here and called the G0 phase if the cell is no longer dividing. Anyway, after the G1 phase, the cell enters the S phase. S here stands for synthesis of DNA. It is thus during this phase that the DNA molecule is replicated. After the cell has copied all of its DNA, it enters another gap phase, G2, in which the cell prepares for mitosis, i.e. cell division. The G1, S and G2 phases together form what is called interphase, which literally means the phase between the cell divisions. The mitosis is divided into several phases, of which prophase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase are the main ones. But those I'll talk much more about in my video about mitosis. Now, if you've seen my video on the structure and function of DNA, you also recognize this picture, which shows why the DNA molecule may be copied. It's because each of the strands in the double-stranded DNA molecule can serve as a template for a new DNA strand, like this. If the two strands are separated from each other, two new strands can form like this, with the help of the old ones as templates. To explain in greater detail how this is done, I'll first show you an animation which you don't have to copy, and then we'll write something to keep in our notes too. The animation is from Professor Giannini of St. Olaf College in Minnesota, USA. I do hope this is considered fair use. Anyway, here we have a small piece of DNA that's about to be copied. What happens first here is that a protein called a helicase, that's the green rectangle here, opens up the DNA molecule somewhat like a zipper. The violet oval here represents stabilizing proteins. The red oval that appears here is an enzyme called a primase. It lays down a small strand of RNA called a primer, and in just a second we'll see what that does. Here comes the primer, and this blue square here is an enzyme called a DNA polymerase. It needs a starting point, either some DNA or, as in this case, some RNA, where it can start building new DNA. As you can see here, the DNA polymerase builds a new DNA strand while moving to the left here. But because of the chemical structure of the DNA molecule, the DNA on the other strand must be built backward. Because of this, the strand down here is called the lagging strand, while the one on the top is called the leading strand. In the lagging strand, several DNA fragments called Okazaki fragments form. When all of the DNA has been copied, there remains some cleaning to do. The RNA must be replaced with DNA and the Okazaki fragments must be joined together. Another DNA polymerase, the black oval here, scans the newly formed DNA molecules and replaces the RNA primers with DNA whenever they find them. Finally, an enzyme called a ligase joins the fragments so that one continuous DNA strand is formed. The DNA molecule has now been copied or replicated as we biologists prefer to say. Now, turn to a new page in your notes and we'll draw what's called a replication fork. We start by drawing some double-stranded DNA here, which is separated into two single strands. This process is carried out by a protein called a helicase which you perhaps remember opens up the DNA molecule somewhat like a zipper. 
I prefer to draw my helicase as a triangle. We also add some stabilizing proteins here. They prevent the two single strands from sticking to each other again. Up here we draw the leading strand. The leading strand is synthesized in one fell swoop, like this. First an RNA primer is laid down to act as a starting point for the DNA polymerase. And here it comes! It synthesizes new DNA in this direction. On the lagging strand the DNA synthesis is semi-disrupted, which is because it has to be synthesized in the opposite direction. New primers are continuously laid down and the DNA polymerase keeps synthesizing DNA backward. This results in several Okazaki fragments on the lagging strand. Now the picture of the replication fork is finished, but there's still some work to do with the DNA before the cell may enter mitosis. It's time for some final cleaning. The RNA primers have to be replaced by DNA, which is carried out by another kind of DNA polymerase. Then the Okazaki fragments must be ligated or joined together. This is done with the help of an enzyme called a ligase. And when two new shiny DNA molecules have formed, each one is an exact copy of the original, the cell is ready for mitosis. And that will be the subject for the next video.